Welcome back. In this video, we'll learn how to make cubic curves come together into splines. Last time, we talked about the joys of cubic curves and how you could shape the curve with four control points or two and two tangents. But what if we need a curve to pass through 11 control points? Well, we can use the same approach to fit a higher order polynomial. We'll need a 10th order polynomial in this case. This is actually not that hard. You just end up solving an 11 by 11 matrix equation instead of a 4 by 4. The result looks like this. It's kind of good in the middle, but gets crazy on the sides. Let's zoom out to give you a better sense of what the curve looks like. Yikes! This is a well-known problem with high order polynomials. They tend to go crazy. Instead, what we'll do is attach several cubic curve pieces together into a longer curve. Each color here is a different cubic. This is called a spline. Let's start with a curve that interpolates the first two control points. That's only two equations, so we'll add the tangents in as additional constraints. Remember we learned how to solve this in part one. We'll also display only the part of the curve between the two control points. Now we'll fit a second curve, this green one, between the next pair of control points. Here I'm showing both of these together. You can see that they meet up, which is good, However, there's a bit of a kink in the middle, because the tangents don't agree. The place where two curves meet up like this is called a knot, and knots can get pretty gnarly. We can fix this by making the tangents the same. This is easy, since we're manually specifying the tangents anyway. This gets rid of the kink, and since our tangents are the same, it's smooth across the knot. There's a special name for this kind of continuity. It's called a C1. And now you can move the two tangents together to get different C1 curves. But if you don't want to even think about tangents, a good rule of thumb is to automatically set the tangent parallel to this vector between the next control point and the previous one. You can calculate it using this equation. You can connect as many points as you want this way, and it's called a catmull rom spline named after its two inventors. We'll drop the colors to show that it's one connected curve. This is one of the most popular ways to interpolate data points and create animations. In fact, if your data is on a regular grid like this, there's another way to perform this operation. If you saw our video on convolution, you'll remember that you can interpolate a continuous function by sliding a cubic filter of weights. What we didn't say is what function you get from doing this, the answer, amazingly, is the catmull rom spline. But catmull rom is just one option. If we go back to our two curves, we have one degree of freedom, which is the tangent at the knot. Instead of choosing the tangent, let's add a different constraint. Let's make the second derivative the same. But first, let's take stock of where we are. Let's go back to our two curves. We have four unknowns for the red curve and four for the green. So we need eight constraints or equations total to solve for the eight unknowns. Let's call the three constraint times S for start, E for end, and K for not. How many constraints do we have? Let's review. We need to pass through the control points. That's two for the red curve and another two for the green curve. That's four equations so far. We also need the tangents at the not to be equal. This means the derivatives are equal which defines this equation. We recognize the left and right sides as the derivatives of the cubic equation evaluated at the knot k. We'll rearrange in this form, and this gives us five out of our eight equations. So let's introduce one more. Let's make the second derivatives equal at the knot. Here's the equation for the second derivative, which we rewrite this way, and it gives us our sixth constraint. To round it out, we'll set the second derivative to be zero at both endpoints of the curve. The analogy here is that the wire is clamped at both endpoints, so it can't move. Now we have enough equations to solve for the curve coefficients. To do this, we'll put all of these constraints in an eight by eight matrix. First, we have the red curve's control point constraints. Notice that these two rows only constrain the red curve as the green curve's coefficients are all multiplied by zero. The next two rows add the green curve's control points. This is the tangent equality constraint at the knot, 
And this is the constraint that makes the second derivatives equal at the knot. The last two rows set the second derivative to zero at the start and end points. Here's the whole matrix. And if we solve it, we get this result. Now that's a nice smooth curve. A curve like this, where both first and second derivatives are continuous across knots, is called C2. And because it passes through the control points, this is a C2 interpolating spline. The way we chose the last two constraints to have a sec zero second derivative at the endpoints makes this a special type of C2 interpolating spline called a natural cubic spline. Remember in part one, we talked about fitting a curve that minimizes a bending energy defined as the squared second derivative and that the fit gets better if you add more samples. And if you had an infinite number of samples, it would converge to some magic curve. This magic curve is the natural cubic spline that we just derived. It minimizes this energy function over all C2 functions. And we can fit as many points as we want by solving larger matrix equations. While the natural cubic spline is amazing, it does give up something important. Notice how the whole curve moves a little when we change this one control point. See it move near this arrow, for example. Whereas for Catmull Rom, most of the spline remains fixed. This is called local control, and it's a very useful feature. For example, an animator may want to finish one section, freezing that part, and move on to the next. Stay tuned for part three, where we'll cover 2D curves and B-splines, another amazing curve type.